verses that I've heard a lot in this before. Yeah, especially verse 1 and 2, Romans 12, 1, yeah. and, one and 2. Two, two, you know, God's, God's will is good, it's pleasing, it's perfect, you know. But then, so, so, so I read that, and then I'm like, that's God's will, but God's will was to kill Harry. So that's good and pleasing. And then I'm, my brain is like, oh yeah, it is, because it helped others, but killing yeah. isn't good and pleasing, and so it's, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. One, one thing I didn't say when we were talking about this earlier is, um, I don't believe I said this, but uh, on that Herod thing, is that, you know, God is God. And I might have said it in, in other words or different words, but he gets to do what he wants. Yeah. I don't. He, he's God and, and I'm not. And I know enough about him, enough about his goodness, that I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to trust uh, the part of him I don't understand. Now, in a really, really uh, juvenile and small way, that's the same way it is with our children. Our children know that, um, that we're, we're their dad. And they know that we provide them home and food and clothes and, and we uh, provide for them. And so when it comes to things about, you know, the hard decisions that, that a dad, mom and dad have to make, they may not understand it. But um, they've got to come to grips with, hey, this is my house, you know, that bed you sleep in, I bought for you. Uh, and then... But, but it's, you know, and the clothes you wear and the food you eat, right? And that car you drive, I mean, everything you have, I have provided for you. Yeah. And, and so, but, but it's, if we're, if we're going to help our children mature, we need to have a healthy conversation about those things rather than an, an abusive um conversation about a one-sided conversation about those things uh, and so in the same way it is with with God there's some things I don't understand but I'm telling you that the things the things about his love for me I, in fact I'm still trying, trying to figure out why he would love me but right. he, but he does and so I'm going to let that help me uh, not make an excuse for things I don't understand but help me to continue to think about and and try to find a reasonable explanation for the things I don't understand about God. And I think that's, I just think that's objectively healthy um, for our spiritual growth and for our testimony to the world. Does that make sense? It does. I'm literally texting my wife right now telling her that to remind me that we're in a family conversation tonight with the children about exactly what you just said. I'm literally texting her right now. Well, praise God, man. Praise God. Um, and, and verse 2, Romans 12, 2 says, Don't be conformed any longer, right? Because you have been. And don't 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 be that way anymore because you're born again now, right? You're a Christian. Don't don't be conformed any longer right before you met Christ you were conformed to this where you just did what they said you didn't, didn't necessarily think about it. you just but you've been called like Paul said in, in Philippians to a higher calling so don't be conformed anymore you're going to turn the corner here as you're um, as you're growing as you're giving, giving your life continually uh, over, as you continue to grow, you're going to, don't be conformed anymore. You're, you're turning the corner on your ethics, on your morality, on your uh, integrity, on your, how you handle your finances. You don't understand, I mean, I'm just pl role playing here, that, that coming to, uh, coming to, um, learn about the Christian worldview and that, you know, that God is and that he informs all of my life 
uh, is an ongoing process. And so he says, don't be conformed anymore uh, to the pattern of, of the world. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, um, evil for evil. Like Acts 13, or Acts 12, don't repay um, evil for evil. The pattern of this world, but I want you to be transformed by renewing, renewing your mind. Hebrews um, uh, 5.14 talks about training your senses. Um, 2 Timothy says that the word of God is alive. And it's sharper than a two-edged sword. James says reading the word is, is painful. Sword, a sword is painful. And it's like looking in the mirror, James says. You can look and you see all, all the scruffy part. You need, you need to you know, go fix your hair. You need to put on whatever, clean clothes or something. Looking in the mirror shows you what's wrong with you. And reading God's word shows you what. But you're being transformed. You're you used to be an enemy of God. Now you're now you're a son of God. You're a friend of God. So so we're going to be transformed. How do we how do we transform our life? Well, the in, the indwelling Holy Spirit gives us the desire and the power to do that. And I'm going to I'm transformed by renewing 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 my mind. I used to think this. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 and 5. I used to think this. That's a lie. But now I'm going to choose to choose to believe that because that's the truth. It's objectively true. The Christian worldview is objectively true and most closely um, uh, uh, reflects uh, uh, reality as we experience it on a daily basis. So I'm going to reject um, godless ways, my old ways, the, my old ways of thinking, my old habits. I don't want to reject my old friends. But I'm going to start believing. Now that I've given my life to Christ, I'm going to be uh, transformed. And how does that start? It starts by renewing, renewing my mind, changing the way I think. Hebrews 5.14, I'm training my senses. And, and so how does that happen? By, um, by reading, God's, reading God's word. And listening to um, preachers that are um, not woke. <laughs> we don't listen to preachers that are not progressive. If you got skinny jeans on and a and a, a Armani suit, don't I don't know. Be be weary. Um, and then verse uh, still in verse uh, two it says, and then see when you start transforming your your thinking your mind by reading God's word then you're going to be able to test and approve the will of God his good and pleasing and perfect will so it starts by reading God's word and then the battle you know the battle has been won by Christ on the cross and this is where we um uh, where Paul said, "Work out your salvation." I'm I'm working out in my everyday life uh, what um, the Bible says has been uh, put into me, and that is I got I have the Holy Spirit, and I've been I'm born again now. I have a relate. I'm not an enemy of God anymore. So I'm going to work out in my daily life. This is why when someone says, "Are you a Calvinist or an Arminian?" I say yes. Yeah, that's a belief system where the Calvinist says that um, you have no uh, choice or maybe ability in the in in the salvation, and and then Armenian. Uh, but these are religions. No, uh, Calvinism. Calvinist. A uh, Calvin was a person. Armenia. Armenia was a person, and so the derivative is Calvinism and Arminianism. And and so uh, Armenian Armenian said that um, you have the responsibility um, to uh, respond to what God is doing in you, and 
Calvin said, well, you can't respond unless God gives you the ability to respond. And both make sense to me. Um, so that's why if someone says, are you a Calvinist or an Arminian? I say, yep. So they're both forms of believers. They're both uh, belief systems, uh, belief ideas about God and, and, and how to follow God and um, how to understand him, how to understand um, salvation and the, and the process of um, following uh, God after your, after your, uh, to get to God and then following him after you're um, um, a saved, you know, born again person. It's just, it's just the theolo- splitting theological hairs, if you will. Um, yeah. Huh. I didn't, I didn't even know my dog was in the kennel this whole time. We just got a new puppy. I don't know. I know. I saw your your new puppy last time we spoke. Look at him; he's grown a little bit. Yeah, he's he's a lot bigger. He's seven ish pounds now. He's still cute. Oh, he's adorable. Are his teeth <laughs> teeth still sharp as razors? Oh yeah. Woo! Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no 